two dimensions of this thing. The first taking of power was not a question of taking of power. It was an attempt to contain the possibility of an explosion, okay? Because um, it was a military regime and uh, we had tasted every aspect of government, socialism, capitalism, one-party state, multi-party state, coups, etc. None of these regimes were accountable to the people. Finally, we ended up with a situation where we had lost faith, the masses had lost faith in civilian democratic government. The masses had lost faith in the military government generals who used to rescue us once in a while. They, they were also becoming as corrupt as whatever it is. So in effect, what we ended up with, that the, the country had grown disillusioned with civilian elected governments and everything. The country had grown disillusioned with generals who came to save us. And now the situation was ready for the possibility of an explosion. French Revolution, Russian Revolution, any revolution you've read about, it was a reality in my country. And it was dangerous because very often in some parts of the world, let's say in my part of the world, for instance, it is not the medium of education, the medium of respect, of merit that is used to govern people, but they use the medium of fear to terrorize the people into a state of subjugation. When you use fear, it degenerates into hatred, and hatred can blow up. So the country was on the, on the verge of blowing up. And not that I disrespect the corporals and the sergeants and the lance corporals, but the point is that they were on the verge of now taking over power because the senior officers could not rescue the country. And quite frankly, had they done so, they would have butchered most of the officers because they saw the officers as part of whatever it was. So I want you to understand, we were running through dangerous times by 1979. So in moving in the first time, it was not a coup d'etat. I was trying to prevent a, vo a revolt, a mutiny, a revolution, a violent revolution. I tried to be as modest as I could to prevent it, and I ended up being arrested on the 15th of May, 1979. The very thing I was trying to prevent in 1979, a few weeks later, June 4th, 1979, from 15th May, 1979, to June 4th, the country just exploded. And it took us almost, th the country was just craving and calling for blood. Three former heads of state, six or five generals, to appease the bloodlust of the country. We had to, the military had to pay the price for it in order to prevent, you know, an escalation on the civil front. The civil front was equally angry. But we had to use the military to contain them and to pay the price with the military. So besides, we, we had um, a multi-party democracy, what you call it, election in process within three months. And we couldn't stop it. We had to let it happen. So within three months after the revolt, we were able to hand over and we withdrew back to barracks. Okay? But the difference is that in withdrawing back to barracks, corporals, sergeants, officers had tasted freedom, had tasted justice, had tasted political, political justice. What a country must be like. So when we withdrew back to barracks, there was a way in which the, civilian, the new civilian politicians had lost they, they had become oblivious to what took place. They had lost track of what took place. So they started misbehaving again. And this time, when people taste freedom, you cannot take it away from them again. So it was as if, uh-uh, this is not what we asked for. So they were getting ready to move back again. And I had the responsibility of taking that because I was seen as the hero type of thing. If I didn't, I would be indicted. If I didn't, 
somebody else angrier, very angry, would take it and it would be very disastrous. And assassination attempts on me, etc., the corruption by the government, the foolishness, etc. We had no choice but to step in. Otherwise, the revolt of 79 this time would have repeated itself in 82 and it would have been worse and uncontrollable. So I had no choice but to come in this time. So this time, you can call it a partial revolt and a partial coup in order to contain the situation. So when you're talking about democracy, please, it may mean one thing to you here, but it means something else to some of us uh, where I come from, my continent. I think in your country, look, let me just cite one little example. When we had to go into multi-party democracy, and I was invited to come and give a talk in a church house, and I said, and I said, um, I said something which shocked our people. I said, I did not fear God. So the whole church was quiet and silent and shocked. And then I said, because I love God. Then they all exploded with happiness. So I turned it around and I said, how many of you are not afraid of your bosses at work? Most of you are very terrified and frightened of your bosses at work. And you don't like it, do you? The whole church was quiet. You know, thousands of people. Big place. And then I went on to say that you're not happy with that, but back at home, your wives are just as afraid of you as you are afraid of your bosses. Your children are afraid of you just as you are afraid of your bosses. Do you like that? Would you not be happier if you had a, res a relationship of respect, respectability between you and your boss? vertically and horizontally would you not be happier if your wife and your children respected and loved you are you happy with being afraid of your boss you're not why should why should you be happy with your children and your wife being afraid of you so in effect what i was trying to tell them was that i love god i revere god and i respect I would want to have a relationship of respect and love between my wife and my children, my employees, my subordinates, etc. I don't want to live in fear of somebody, nor do I want somebody to live in fear of me, etc. Can you believe, can you believe that when the election uh, a campaign started, intellectuals, politicians were campaigning against me and saying, vote Vote for God-fearing people. Vote for God-fearing people. Don't, as if to say, don't vote for God-loving people. So I'm trying to make you understand that, you know, when you're talking about democracy, you must talk about the, the power and the capacity of the people to be strong enough, to be defiant enough to be able to protect freedom and justice. People who cannot protect freedom and justice cannot protect democracy. People who cannot protect freedom and justice, they do not, and you do not empower them to be able to defy you when you are wrong, cannot correct you. And with the passage of time, you become a tyrant, you become a dictator, etc., etc., etc. I'm sorry, a simple question, I've gone too long, but...